Hi everybody, this is Tracy with Tracy's Art and Craft and I am here today with another video and this video is making double corner tucks and bookmarks with no scraps and you can do this out of any size paper, any type of paper so I'm going to show you how you, to make, you can make them you can make them scruffy and ripped like this or you can make them neat and cut like this you can ink them or not ink them there are so many ways you can do it you can also do it let me show you you can make some tucks out of a different size paper and even get to make some pockets this pocket is going to be a layered pocket. We're going to get making those in just a second. So I'm going to start you off making these neat ones. Then we will go on to the torn ones. Now with the neat ones and the double neat ones, you end up with a slice of paper like this that you can use as a book, either a bookmark or a belly band. Of course you can use it as other things as well um, your imagination is your only limit okay so i would probably use these as belly bands because belly bands are my favorite but i do also like to make bookmarks with the torn one you get a belly band a bit like this you can have it with the point still on but it looks a little weird so i took that off but yeah this is going to be minimal waste you will have little bits where you're cutting off corners and things, but generally it is minimal waste. Let me pull up my sleeves, so I mean business. And let's get on making one of these. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in two bits of four by four by four. No, six by six paper. Let's go for that one. Two bits of six by six paper. There we go. And I'm going to get my cutting board so I can show you how to do it on a cutting board. If you don't want to use a cutting board, you don't have to. You can use a ruler with a craft knife. You can use, um, you know, scissors and just sort of use a ruler and draw the lines, especially if you draw the lines on the back, then cut it. Um, then the lines won't show. So what I'm going to do is for the first big part of the pocket this part here I am going to go in and I am going to make it so that the two corner points diagonal points are dead center in my cutting board and then I'm just going to cut that in half so we've gone exactly in half corner to corner these are our corner bits the very next bit we are going to do is we are going to take our next piece now instead of lining it up corner to corner with the cutting line here we're going to line up corner to corner with the edge here this will make it about an inch and a bit i think or maybe an inch away from the line so this is what i mean we're going to take our corner to corner and line it up to the edge of our cutting board here you could mark an inch and a half away from each corner and then cut straight across the lines okay if you don't want to use a cutting board or you can use a cutting board here by just lining it up and cutting there's one then we're going to turn it around put it in and we're going to line it up again or you're going to make another one and a half mark one and a half inch mark from each corner and then we're going to cut again this is now our belly band or um, bookmark or whatever you want to turn that into and these are our smaller corners corner tucks so now if we've got a bit disorganised down here, I do apologise. I've just done a whole video and I've just dumped it all down. I'm going to get a scoreboard. You don't have to have a scoreboard. Do not go out and buy things that you don't already have or anything like that. There's no point in wasting money. If you don't want it, you don't need it. I'm getting 
a bone folder, my scoring tool and my scissors. You don't need a scoreboard, you can just fold. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of my pieces and I'm going to go for the second notch in, which is the one quarter of an inch. Now you don't have to measure and you don't have to score. You could just fold these lines. So you could fold that side. I'll show you in just a second. And you can fold that side. So say you haven't scored. You can just come in and you can just fold the edges in. Okay, and then fold the edges in. You don't have to have a bone folder. You can squash it down with the edge of your scissors. It does exactly the same thing, okay? Now with your scissors, you're gonna take off this corner here, and then when you fold them in, you're gonna notice you've got this little bit here that sticks out. So you're just gonna cut that off so it goes flush. And here again, you have the corner bit that sticks out. Cut it off so it goes flush. Now I'm just going to do the next one to show you again. Quarter of an inch on each of your non-diagonal sides, your flat sides, at the right angle. Here, yeah, quarter of an inch. Doesn't have to be exact. Again, you can just fold them in. We're going to cut off that corner. We're going to fold them in oopsie there we go try to fold it the wrong way there and we're just going to cut off these excess little corners so so far the waste is really really minimal it's just tiny corners look at that from two bits of six by six that's the waste we've got so far. Now there will be a little bit more coming the way, but it's not major. It's, again, it's just corners. So with the large ones, we're gonna do the same, quarter of an inch. No need for more. Also, if you are using a scoreboard, make sure you use different levels of pressure depending on the thickness of paper. So, for instance, here I could put a tiny bit of pressure on. But if it was thin paper, I can't put any pressure on at all. I have to run it down very, very gently. Because otherwise it just tears right the way through. So it's all about the pressure that you use. There we go, so I'm going to cut off those bottom corners again. Fold it in. Like so. Now instead of just chopping off this bit, a nice way to do it is to chop off the whole corner to make a flat edge so the whole corner like that to make a flat edge and then what you do is you see you glue here and here and it just gives a really nice tuckable spot it really makes it quite wide and movable so again off of that this is the extra waste that we've got this is it and I don't know about you but I don't mind wasting tiny bits like that when it means you know that we have all these beautiful papers and we're not filling up our bins with wasted paper it's just minimal amounts so again i'm just going to go cut across these it will just mean it fits in the page better as well rather than taking over the whole page there we go now putting these together is really, really simple. You can ink it if you wish to. I'm not going to right now. I'll ink after if I so wish. Let me just pull in my magazine. I'm just using a magazine to glue on to save my cutting board as much as I can this time. I'm trying to be less of an oaf. <laughs> I'm 
I'm a bit of a nightmare with things like that. So I've got some glue here. This is just, um, I think this is just PVA to be honest. Um, I found my little glue bottle and found out I had glue in it so I want to use it up. I think this is just PVA, it's very watery. So, just popping a little bit of glue down this side. I'm just using the um, other one as a template for how high to go up. Now I find, if you fold them in, you're going to have to hold them a while. I find it a lot easier if I put it down, make sure they're tucked right in, and then give it a little squish. On this part, if you want to make it easier on yourself, and you find it easier to use, you can use double-sided tape on this part, just holding these um, pockets together. There we go, they're all nicely stuck down now. And there we are, we have a double pocket. It is really easy. I know I've done it step by step and it seems hard, but I promise you it is super, super simple. I'm gonna show you the torn one. The torn one's even easier. And we'll do that next. I love the torn one. I love the look of torn paper you see in my journals. So the torn one would be my more go-to one. But you know, I could use the, the um, neat ones as well. That doesn't make the difference really, but torn would be my preferred, just for my own taste. But the torn one is even easier. It really is. Ooh, I've got some glue on there. Just mark the paper. I'm just gonna rub that off. There we go, and there's another one. So, so simple, so quick to make. This is where I'm going to show you how to make the torn one. I'm going to take two bits of paper. I usually go for the plane to be the bigger triangles and then the pattern to be the smaller. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to tear from the corner and I'm going to tear right down the middle. Doesn't have to be neat, doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry about hamster tube marks you know where it looks like a hamster's tube through the other paper don't worry about that once you ink it it's just gonna look really really nice so there's those two and I'm going to show you this time how to fold it without the scoreboard because I don't always use a scoreboard so this time I'm going to go down this side if your pattern is diagonal it does help a lot but don't rely on just that I go by eye if you can't go by eye, all you've got to do is measure out a mark and mark it there. Then measure out a mark, again I'm doing it by eye, but you know what I mean, if you used a measure, you measure from the corner up to here, and make a mark. Measure from the corner to there, make a mark. And the mark won't be seen once you've torn it really. And then you sort of tear down, aiming, aiming for this spot here. doesn't matter if it doesn't quite make, make it, it's still going to be just fine. So, there we go, you see this one I've made a little bit bigger, it's okay, it's all going to be fine. So this is what you're left with, now I thought this looked really messy leaving the triangle on, so all I did was I just tore off those triangles now you could then go on to turn this into a little cluster with the other bits you cut off later or you can get rid of it i'm fine with getting rid of these little bits but you could have a cluster there by putting on once you've done this bit and you lose them corners you can then put them on as well and make yourself a little cluster so you don't have to even waste these bits if you don't want to so now let me show you how I would fold these if I didn't have a scoreboard. I would actually fold them together because then you can guarantee this one is going to fit this one. Does that make sense? So hold them together into the corner like this and then bring them up and score it. Now like I say you don't have to use this, you could use the end of your scissors 
whatever feels more comfortable and then open it back up so you can do the next side Ooh. line them up again in case you moved them like I just did it happens and then fold it in again and score don't worry if it's not perfectly straight it is all gonna look fine in the ends now you're gonna have be left with that corner again you can cut it off both of them at the same time now this is where I glue it down I do I tear off the ends in a minute so glue this one down and glue this one so we're just gluing the small one to the bigger one there we go then I turn it around and I want to take off these edges again just like I did before so I just tear the straight edges in like so and there we have a lovely torn corner tuck I haven't used hardly any tools literally hardly any I've used if I didn't use my bone folder I've used a pair of scissors and that is it really so again I'm going to do it by hand for you guys so you can see how simple it is how you don't need tools so when we say you don't need tools, you could use something else, we really do mean it. And I'm just doing it for you just so that I can show you, you really don't need those tools. I mean, if you've got them, great, use them, you know. But if you haven't got them, you don't need to go out and be buying yourself expensive things. The whole point of making junk journals is that we are saying no. We're not going to be paying the prices of scrapbooking materials and you know all this really expensive stuff the point of junk journals is that we reuse items that we already have to stop waste to recycle and to basically say a big up yours to the big companies who charge a fortune for products so if there's any way you can use anything that isn't expensive like the end of your scissors instead of an expensive bone folder not that they're expensive but you know i mean why go out and pay a pound when you've already got something there that can squash you know that's all it's doing it's squashing i mean i've got them because they were bought for gifts for me but i don't go out and buy new ones i mean this one's really tatty it's got glue all over it it's got ink all over it I mean it's got really thick glue on it as well like I think I could probably peel that off in a layer but yeah I, I don't go out and buy new and I use this um for glue spreader as well if I need to spread glue about I use this as a glue spreader because it's plastic it's a piece of plastic it's not nothing special so I'm just going to tear these corners off um what other tips do I have if you're going to use Mika you haven't got any you want some Mika powder don't go out and buy it um kids mine that stuff poor little four-year-old babies are out there mining that stuff I bet you've got eyeshadow I bet you anything you know someone who's got eyeshadow if you haven't eyeshadow that has gone out of date perfect for art um eyeshadow that you just don't like maybe it's got a really disgusting brown color hello we use that everywhere don't we maybe you've got really bright blue come on who hasn't made a blue junk journal or had splashes of blue in their work so all you've got to do is take a little bit of this pop it down spread it out clean your finger put it into your eyeshadow and pop it on top of your glue and only PVA. PVA will work best because you can get it really thin. So PVA, really cheap glue, that is your stuff. Rub it on and it will stick to it. And you'll have that Mika powder there shining brilliantly for eternity. Like it's going to be stuck there. 
So there's another tip for you. We'll have to do something with that one day. I'll do a video on that because um, I'd also like to do a video on the importance of mica powder and the waste of it when children are mining it, you know. Let's do another one. So I'm going to tear again. I love the torn look. You do it however you so wish. There we go. So we've got two. And then I'm just going to go down diagonally on this. There's one. I'm going to take these corners off. Let's make you this time a cluster and show you how you can make a cluster out of the little corners. Here we go. So I'm just going to line these up again. I'm going to do it without a scoreboard again because I think for beginners this is the way they're going to do it. And I think seeing somebody repeatedly make these helps with getting it in your memory. So we're just going to give this another squash down open it up because then it won't be in your way then we're just going to squash it down again again don't need to use a bow folder use whatever you have and then we're just going to take that corner off there we go and because you're holding both of them you're doing them both at the same time we're going to take our glue Now there's nothing wrong with PVA, people do like tacky glue, it sticks down our ribbons and all sorts. But if you're a beginner, when you're first starting out, you're not going to want to buy all this expensive stuff or expensive glues and whatnot. There is nothing wrong when you're sticking paper to paper with PVA glue or glue sticks. We all use glue sticks from time to time, or majority of us. Some people don't like glue sticks and that's fine. As you, you know, can splash out maybe a bit on some glues it is worth trying other glues i would recommend any tacky glue that would be called your wet white glue i would highly recommend tacky glues they're very very good for sticking down um laces and things here we are let's make ourselves a little cluster Um, other than that, um, this glue is another one I'd recommend, 3-in-1 or Fabri-Tac. They're both pretty much the same, 3-in-1 Fabri-Tac. I don't notice any difference between them. Some people say they've noticed one be quicker, dries quicker than the other. I haven't noticed. Um, but yeah, it's a possibility. I, d I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is really, really good. You can sticky gems on with this. You can stick your um you, it would do paper to paper fabric to paper paper to fabric um it's really good for not puckering as well so it doesn't pucker your paper because it's not wet it dries um it's a silicone glue or acetone glue so it dries um sort of dry it doesn't dry um wet from wet so it doesn't pucker your paper so we've got these little clusters. What you could do is, um, I've got some butterflies here. Let's grab a couple of little butterflies in. What have we got? So what you could do is grab a couple of little butterflies and just pop them on. You can then tidy up your cluster. So tearing off any bits you don't like. Maybe you don't like any of the corners and you want them gone. Like that and you've got yourself a lovely little cluster you could even pop that onto your journal if you wish or you could pop it onto the opposite page just a little pink one there we go
and there we are. So you don't even have to waste paper, so there we go, we've only wasted this much from two sheets of paper. So you can make the most out of all this stuff, you know, you don't have to. And if you think about it, when you're making the most out of your paper, you're getting more for your money as well. Especially if you're just starting out. So try to use your imagination of what you could use all these little bits for. If you are lost, clusters are definitely always the way to go. Because you can put bits on that are really, really tiny and it would still be a beautiful cluster. There we go. So I'm just going to glue these on now. So even though I'm saying this is for beginners, even I make these. I'm not making this just to show beginners an easy way. Even I make these. So even people that are experienced in junk journal make the easy beginner stuff. Because you start off with this. And from there you decorate them. Now I'm just going to check the time. Because my camera just likes to shut down after 30 minutes. So let me just check that. You're back. There we go, take these corners off. So there we go. So yeah, even though we do that, we do start off with the basics. Now, of course, you could leave it like this. It'll be pretty. You could pop one of your clusters on. Equally pretty. You could also really go out and jazz it up. So let's see, what do I fancy making with this today? I've got some fabric scraps here, so I'm just going to pull them down. Now, these tiny, tiny fabric scraps... I tend to use these on um, making snippet rolls, but also when I'm trying to decorate up a small area, they are ideal. I wish I had some green bits actually, because they would have gone really nicely with the journal that I'm making, but alas, I do not. So one thing I like to really like to do is to layer up. Actually, I think I'll go for all pink. So I really like to layer up a cluster. And then from there, I like to... Sorry, I do have everything here from the um, haul video that I did. So I have all the packaging next to me and things. Oh, so I've got to fight my way through. I like to use a Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher. You don't have to use this, you can use normal staples and actually you can get very cheaply now coloured staples and I do like to use colourful ones when I use normal ones. But I'm just using this for quickness. You could sew through that, you could glue it down. Lots of ways, you could, lots of things you could do with that. So I'm going to glue that down. I'll get my three and one. Add a little glue. It comes out quickly because I store it upside down. There we go. Glue that on. Now we'll take one of my little butterflies again. What size do I want? That's a bit big. This goes down a size. But this one. Yeah, I like that one. I think I'm just going to ink the edges a little bit. Just to sort of bring it down a bit. There we go, that brings its brightness down a little bit. I just got to hold that down for a second just to get that to grab. There we go. 
And what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to pop a little bit of thin lace going across both of these. So what lace should we do? Should we do a green to go with the green butterfly that we've got? I think we should. I'm going to use some of this um, embroidered edging. Pull off, pull out, there we go. Let's just see if it will tear for me. So I don't want it quite as wide as it is. Oh, perfect, it will tear. So again, all my little scraps go in there for making clusters. And then I'm able to put a little edge piece down. I think I'm just going to do one more little piece just to go along this edge here. Of course, there's so many ways you can decorate this up. So many ways. And the trick to using fabric is tearing. So for the look that we get, the trick is to tear it, always tear it. If you can't tear it, if you run it through, um, say you're cutting a piece, if you hold it like this and sort of, as you're cutting, pull it into the corner here of your scissors, if you sort of hold it and pull it, um, you get like a almost torn look about it a really sort of rough torn look so that's one way to do it if you can't actually tear it with your hand because I know some people have bad hands I know I do sometimes my hands um, do play me up somewhat in my knuckles I wouldn't be surprised if I got arthritis when I was older my mum and dad both suffer from it so it wouldn't surprise me one bit so yeah, I do know, you know, that it can be difficult to craft when you have sore hands. So if you can't rip it, that's one way to make it easier on cutting for yourself. So there we go. That is an idea for dressing up your little pockets and making them something a little bit extra special. Um, another way is paper flowers. You can put paper flowers on. Um, tear up some music paper or some book page and pop on and yeah I just want to end this on showing you one more little thing and that is that you can use any size paper let me explain so I've got these little um, decoupage book pages and these I do have a digital for sale in my Etsy store and they come with all different ones like this like this um and this one so it comes with this one with the birds um, it comes with all different ones okay so we're going to start off with this butterfly one so all you do is you measure this side the short side and then i already know the measurements but you measure the short side and then you go along that high up and make a mark and then cut it okay so I for instance already know where the mark is where I have to be is right here just make sure everything is straight nope I'm at the wrong mark trust me to be at the wrong mark there we go this is the right one and then we just cut it and this is where I said to keep these little pieces here 
that is now a square from there you can go down either tear or cut corner to corner and you have your two corners so again that would work for um, a four paper anything like that so let me just show you I'm just going to use these for the corners like I was going to there we go let me just show you what I was going to do with these little pieces here I had another one where have you gone here you are so hi I just gilded mine with the gold gilding where has that gone it's over here getting a bit messy now so I'm starting to lose everything so this lasts absolutely ages because you literally only need a tiny piece so what you're going to do is you're going to hold them all together uh, hang on one second hold them all together and just fold them all in so they've each got a folded edge like so let's see Sorry, my folding is going terrible. All right, there we go. So we've all got a folded edge, like so. And then you just want to go around and gild those edges just by rubbing in a little bit of the gold paste. Along all the edges. There we are. And one of these has to have the bottom also gilded only one of them does the others only the three sides need to be gilded you'll see why in just a second it'll make all sense in one moment so let's just close that off it is safe for you to use on your fingers it does state that on the bottom of the jar oh come on Oh, I'm having a moment now. Can't seem to get the lid on. There we go, gotcha. Okay, I just use my white, white finger. There we are. So this is the one with the bottom that is also gilded and the top, so we'll use that for the bottom. Then what you do is you pop a little bit of glue just along the bottom here the tiniest tiniest amount this will just mean anything you pop into this pocket won't get um won't push all the way through oh hang on am i doing that right nope i'm doing it wrong the first one doesn't i am so sorry let me start that again so we have folded them we have gilded them like so we don't glue the bottom one we don't glue the bottom one closed there's a reason for that we will see soon so all you do is you hold them staggered so this is the bottom one so that would go this way you know this will be the bottom so it'd go that way then you stagger this one and you add a little bit of glue where the two tabs meet just like that and you just close the tabs over like so there we are and then we take the next one open that up again pop it in like so and just a little bit of glue where the two tabs meet making sure they're down then when you glue this down 
you would glue down both these size tabs and just along the bottom here and then you've got yourself three little pockets that way you've made yourself some corner tucks and a little pocket and you've got yourself five pages worth of pockets to put into your journal from just two pieces of paper so this shows that you can use also you don't have to use your 12 by 12s or your 6 by 6 you can also use a4 a5 what are these tiny things these are like photo size really these ones so you know you can use these tiny things as well the size of the paper doesn't matter you just need to square it off to get your nice neat corners but anything you've squared off you can turn into pockets you can turn into clusters you can turn into bookmarks or belly bands um you know it depends all on what it is you're cutting up so i hope that's given you some ideas i hope that sort of ignited a little bit of creativity in your mind and set you off wanting to go and make something even if it isn't to do with this maybe it's just set you off and you think oh i'm just going to go do my favorite craft now i hope it sort of ignited a little bit of creativity in you so um, I hope you liked that video. If you did, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I just want to do a quick shout out at the end here and say a beautiful hello to my new subscribers and a hello to all my original subscribers. Um, also a hello to my beautiful members and a special hello to Joan who is just an absolute delight. She really is. Um, so hello there Joan. Um, she knows who she is she's commenting on everything she's absolutely lovely and I love having chats with her she's so sweet um, down in my description box if you'd like to become a member that is down there you do get a monthly um, happy mail go out on the first of every month you also get access to my digitals for free and I have most of my digitals on there if I'm having problems with some of the files being big it takes me a little while to get them up there because it, it does take a while for me to then split those files. Um, so I have to wait until the day I've got time. I'm so gluey. Um, <laughs> yeah, all of my digital artists that I use are down in the description box below. So they are the places that I buy um, digikits from. I also do some digikits of my own. My store is also down there and so are all my socials. And yeah. I think that is everything. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now. Bye.